John Rooney, coach, trainer, owner of Rooney's Gym. What else do you do, John? Uh, keep a few horses, uh, try and enjoy life as much as possible. I was 50 there a couple of weeks ago on the 11th of March, and they say life begins at 40. Well, I reckon 50 is a new 40, so <laughs> I'm sticking to that, and hopefully it works. <laughs> I had a good squad of fighters at one stage, and then, as you know, the, the sickness took over. And yes, yeah, so tell us a bit about that. We'll bring it full circle and come and talk about your current fighter at the moment. But tell us what happened with. Dad. Basically, I had a decent squad of fighters there that I was managing. James Friars was a seven times Irish champion, Paddy Gallagher, Commonwealth Games gold medalist, and Alfredo O'Malley, who was a, a, another good fighter that didn't fulfil his potential. But uh, basically, when I was sick, I didn't know what was exactly matter with me. Uh, went to see a neurological surgeon, and he told me at Parkinson's. And I told him that he was talking nonsense. I hadn't had Parkinson's. And he said to me, uh, you boxed. And I says, look, I was a decent fighter. I never took much abuse. He says, but you Parkinson's. I totally denied it, went away, spoke to my wife and she says, go for a second opinion, went for a second opinion and they told me at Parkinson's then they wanted to put me on medication and I wouldn't even take an anodin at the minute, like I don't take any medication, but I think the Parkinson's medication because there's no other choice, but anything outside that from like flu stuff or anything, I'm a great mom for natural remedies from years, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think us as a human race, we need to take a hundred steps back before we take one more forward. Uh, but anyway, when I finally accepted that I had Parkinson's, it really made me step up and confront it and do something about it. Yeah. And as you see now, by the hands, the, and the way I speak, the way I walk, the whole demeanor, but I've, so this is you, you're well now. Yeah, absolutely. Thankfully. Um, I asked my wife a question before Christmas, uh, how much do you think I'm back to my old self? And she says 95%. And it wasn't through the medication on its own, I've done alternative medicine, and the results are is what you can see today. And you work with a charity as well, don't you? I work with a charity called Spotlight YOPD, which is a young onset Parkinson's disease. Uh, basically, the matter the NHS, the people that look after Parkinson's patients know nothing about it. There's a saying in Parkinson's, if you haven't got it, you know nothing about it. <laughs> and the charity that we that I work with, uh, basically everyone in the charity has Parkinson's. Every from neurosurgeons to pharmaceutical guys to PR guys, the, the whole broad scale with this, everyone on it has Parkinson's. So, and I mean, I'll put the links to their website and stuff yep. in this interview so that you yep. can have a, get them the publicity. Parkinson's is very, very grossly overlooked, do you know what I mean? It's, it's actually criminal how much it's overlooked, I put it down as the old man's disease. It's not. I speak to a young boy in uh, Liverpool who is 22 years of age. He's been diagnosed when he was 16. He's just had deep brain stimulation through an operation. The day that he went through that operation, he uh, got his results of his master's degree. Wow. Do you know, know what I mean? Wow. And it's basically, uh, the NHS are ignorant about Parkinson's. And the people that should be working on anything to do with Parkinson's need to have Parkinson's. They know because especially young arms have Parkinson's for the reason being a lot of them that have Parkinson's when they're told when they're young they're afraid to come out about it and speak about their illness and because it's overlooked they think it's an old man's disease yeah. do you know what I mean and I just this spotlight chart today uh, hopefully we can do things between myself and everybody else involved in it uh, and what we plan to do with Rooney's Gym is to have Rooney's Gym open every day for that whole group of ailments, whether it's Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, or for people to come in and use Rooney's Gym free of charge and try and get themselves back on the, 
themselves getting healthy. Healthy. Really Parkinson's all about movement, and there's a thing in America, a friend of mine that owns Gleason's Gym in New York, Bruce Silverglade, uh, he started uh, boxing, what, what is it you call it? Uh, basically it's boxing for Parkinson's, and uh, it's all about the movement. Because I have uh, been in boxing so long, the, the boxing, the, the movement and the boxing doesn't do it for me. Um, I'm a firm believer is what has got me to, if, on the fitness side of the moment at the moment is, I ride my horse as many times a week as I can. Now, right. I have to determine the, his movements, and that's what helps me. So, hopefully, some big things in the in the pipeline for Rooney's. Listen, as I say, I was I had two gyms, uh, other businesses, and when the shit hit the fan, it hit the fan. I lost the gym in Belfast. I lost a couple of other businesses. I was very, 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 very lucky to hold on to the current gym that, that I have, and. I have no excuses anymore, I have my health back. Uh, someone asked me a question. If I felt the way I did when I had Parkinson's and the way I feel now, if I hadn't lost everything and the question was asked, would you give everything up to feel the way you do now as what you did then? I would give it up in the morning. Well, that's good. It's a... Uh, as a boxer, as a the, the boxing, I, I fell out of love with the sport. I fell out of love with everything. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And just a few good people around me that helped me the whole way through. Without them, I don't think I'd have made it. Do you know what I mean? But the five-year-old daughter there, and a and a, a nine-year-old daughter, of a twenty-three-year-old daughter, and two eighteen-year-old twin boys. The boys and the older daughter are old enough now to do whatever, but. The young two, the, the, the youngest two, pulled me through, like because I couldn't. You had to be a dad. Yeah, I had to be a dad. And to be quite honest, the thoughts that were going through my head when I was feeling the way I felt were not nice. Were yeah. not nice at all. Well, it's good to see you back. Thank you. Looking well, sounding happy. Well, happy-ish. <laughs> <laughs> John, thank you very much for the support, Adam. Jeff. It's a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Take care.